So, Speaker, to the Premier, where will these camps be built? How many people will be detained? And for what reasons? Question. For what reasons can people be kept in these isolation camps? And I'd like to I'd like to have the Premier assure the people of Ontario. Member, take a seat. Is the province of Ontario, and for that matter, other provinces and territories, are they about to build internment camps as a way of dealing with the Wuhan virus? Now, I know, folks, it sounds preposterous, doesn't it? But Ontario MPP Randy Hillier, he wants to know, and I presume millions of Canadians would like to know. And as a matter of fact, Mr. Hillier raised this very point in question period in the Ontario legislature just a few days ago. Check it out. The next question, the member for Lanark Frontenac Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. In my supplemental question yesterday, I asked this government if the people of Ontario should prepare for internment camps. In September, the federal government posted a call for expressions of interest for contractors to supply, provide, and manage quarantine isolation camps throughout every province and every territory in Canada. These quarantine isolation camps, however, are not limited to people with COVID, but provide a wide latitude for many people to be detained. Surely this government is aware of the intentions to build these isolation camps from coast to coast. And my question to the Premier is, how many of these camps will be built, and how many people does this government expect to do? Question. Government House Leader. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is very true that when people leave the country and when they come back in, that the uh, uh, the province is suggesting, and uh, and the federal government, in cooperation with the federal go government, we are suggesting that people uh, isolate uh, themselves. That has been a, a practice that has been very successful, not only here in the province of Ontario, but across. Uh, uh, across Canada, and we will, of course, be redoubling our efforts to make sure that uh, the people of the province of Ontario uh, remain safe, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. Here's the RFP, and in the RFP, it uses clear language to express that these camps can be used for a broad spectrum of people, not limited to travellers. Indeed, it doesn't even mention inter international travellers. It's just a broad latitude of people. And I'll send over the copy of the RFP after. So your government is, must be in negotiations, negotiations and aware of these plans to potentially detain and isolate citizens and residents of our country and our province. So, Speaker, to the Premier, where will these camps be built? How many people will be detained? And for what reasons? Questions. For what reasons can people be kept in these isolation camps? And I'd like to, I'd like to have the Premier assure the people of Ontario. Member, take a seat. Wow, that's something I think for Mr. Hillier's first question, the answer was evasive, to be kind. For the second question, <laughs> there was no answer. They just cut it off. Um, it's curious, folks, because I did reach out to Mr. Hillier, who was on the road. He wasn't able to join us for an interview. But he said that looking back at that question period experience, there were two red flags. The first one was the silence that continues from the federal government. And the second red flag was that when he asked those questions in the legislature about the internment camps, all of the other MPPs were looking at each other. Randy says they either didn't know this issue or they preferred not to give any answers about this particular issue. I find that troubling. I think one of the hallmarks of a democracy is transparency. And when it comes to the internment camp issue, we're getting no transparency whatsoever. Uh, what was that 2018 Doug Ford campaign slogan again? For the people? For what's best for our lives, for the people, for the people. 
Mm. What happened, Doug? For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, if you can, please go to journalistdefensefund.com. Sometimes we have legal bills, sometimes we have to hire bodyguards, but it's worth it when it comes to bringing you the other side of the story. So if you're able to, please make a donation.